cogent advice and inspiration from real self-made millionaires. Welcome to The Eventual Millionaire with your host, Jamie Masters. Welcome to Eventual Millionaire. I am Jamie Masters, and I am excited to have Kelsey Ramsden on the show. You can check her out at KelseyRamsden.com. She's a mom of three and a bunch of other amazing things, but she also was named twice Canada's top entrepreneur, female entrepreneur. That's ridiculously impressive. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. How the heck do you get named twice, let alone once? So how do you get named twice? I know. It's a bit silly. Uh, I guess I, I did okay. Uh, and I kept doing okay. And then, in all honesty, the third year I said, um, you know, it's not cool to three Pete. That's just being greedy. So don't put my name in the running. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I guess um, in some ways it was the best thing that ever happened to me and the worst thing that ever happened to me. Um, I think a lot of people strive for the sense of, accomplishment and success and, and potentially notoriety. Um, and that comes with a lot of unintended consequences that a lot of us don't understand until we arrive at that place and find out that success is a, is a fickle friend, you know? Let's dive into that though. Cause I don't, I think everybody, especially we've got a lot of successful people listening to the show and they go, Oh, I'm running, running towards the millionaire myth or whatever it is. And then they get there and they're like, Oh, we still have problems. Awesome. Or different problems. Or like no one would assume that being named top female entrepreneur twice is like a bad thing. Right. Tell me a little bit more about all that. Yeah. I mean, I did the same as everyone does, right? You say, I want to make a million dollars. That seems like a good number. So you go, you do that. You know, in my case, the accountant says, Oh, remember you said you wanted to do that. We did that three months ago. And you're like, Oh, okay. You realize that at least for me, having those monetary goals are super important, but Really, there's no material difference between like 800,000, 995, 900,000, 200. Like, it's so incremental. It's very rare that, you know, these like jazz hands, six figure launches and all that stuff is cool, but it's not my jam. Um, and there are very few people who pull that off, and I think they're amazing. But for most of us, the way we make our money and earn our wealth is incrementally. And so a, a few things, number one, often you don't even realize you passed the finish line as it were. Uh, so there's no big like parade and orgasmic aha moment. What? Darn uh, it. It's, what the hell? Uh, it's, it's like, <laughs> that's good. Uh, okay. And then, and then oftentimes on the, on the flip side of that, there's a hollowness that comes because we spend so much energy and focus and attention on arriving at this place believing it's going to fill something, solve something, and it solves many things. I mean, money is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, but it then, of course, it comes with its own kind of subset of interesting things. And money can change. You know, what I often say is, uh, in proportion, success um, amplifies your weaknesses, so whatever your weakness is, and we all have them, and let's like be honest about it. Everyone has a horde of them. It's and no one has just one. We all have a ton. Um, mine can be doing the laundry and not putting it away. Mine can be mm. driving too fast. <laughs> mine can be you know spending too much money when I'm like in a moment of success, being like I'm gonna buy that car. Whatever. Take whatever those things are and just make them bigger. Because now you have the opportunity to hire a maid. Okay, well, I'm not even going to do the lot, you know, do this. And so, so those things that you maybe feel like could use some attention, we often think, oh, when I'm rich or when I've made it, hiring the, hiring the you know, the maid is going to solve it. No, it actually only makes you feel worse about your shortcoming of leaving some poor woman, this huge pile of mess. Yeah, right. So, so all I'm driving at is not to, not to say it's terrible because it's super amazing to be successful. But what it is, is I think we all arrive at this place thinking it's the answer. And really the answer is, uh, the same, whether you have $2, 
minus 127,000 plus 5 million. Um, and, and a lot of us learn that the hard way. We spend all our lives working really hard, missing out on a lot of other things to fill this thing we think is going to solve the problem to arrive there and, and go, Oh my God, I have a success hangover. I like feel terrible after this big thing. And, and no one understands that too. And it sounds really like first world problem me to be like, I have everything, yeah. but I'm unhappy. And they're like, and poor you like, go buy something. Be quiet. Totally. <laughs> oh, so sad. So sad for the millionaire. <laughs> But that's a good point. Like people are living in the future of when something will actually happen, knowing or not knowing that it ever will exist. So we sort of, uh, it's funny, your site talks a lot about future proofing, but we're sort of, is that a, is that a bad thing to always be looking at the future? Because sometimes goals are a wonderful thing. How do you mitigate the goals that you want and the, oh, I will be happy when part? Yeah. So this is the thing. I mean, future proofing to me is this idea that there is no arrival. Like the terrible fact, and this will hurt some people's feelings and hearts, but the truth of the matter is that people like us, ambitious people, driven people, we actually never arrive. We want to. We wish we could. We wish we were like normal people who are totally satiated by whatever it is. We're not like that. We... Got the degree, wanted to do more. Made the money, thought we wanted more. Went on a trip, booked another one. Got an amazing marriage, decided we wanted to work on it still. Like, there is never the end. And, like, to us, comfort is in the discomfort of pursuit. Unless we're a little bit challenged, we're not having a good time. So this idea of future-proofing is looking at, none of us know who we want to be when we grow up, I'm 42, um, we think this future self is something better. But the idea is if you actually want to live in the present, which I think most of us would like to do, actually enjoy the life we have. Um, and it's really about taking these opportunities to strategically engineer situations where our mind is demanded to come to attention. The, this idea that you want to, are you okay with doing something weird? Oh, totally. Okay, great. So, and all the listeners can play along. So okay. we're going to do something weird. Okay. And the reason we're going to do something weird is because most of us are waiting, waiting for this big aha moment. When we figure out what business it is, the big solution, the big something, right? So we're living in this future, waiting for the aha to break through the clouds. Like, oh, <laughs> um, and, and, and we wonder why that never happens. We wonder why we're always in strife. And we wonder why we're, we always feel kind of susceptible to being disrupted by something. Um, so we're going to do this weird thing. And then I may explain why it matters. Cool. Okay, I'm going to ask you two questions. You are not going to answer them out loud. Okay. You are going to answer them in your head. And then I'm going to read your mind. Okay. And I'm going to write okay. 90 <laughs> Three percent of the time. Ooh, telepathy! So, I didn't you know, know on the show. People listening, mm -hmm. you know, nine hundred and thirty uh, thousand of them, or sorry, nine hundred and thirty uh, thousand of the million people are gonna get this right. Okay, I'm gonna get there right. Okay. Okay. So, first question is: I want you to think about something that you know, something specific that you know really well. Okay. Just anything, whatever comes to mind. Got it? Yep. Cool. Now I want you to think about uh, something you remember, something specific, a memory, something you remember. Okay. Cool. So here's what I read your mind. So the thing that you know really well, it could be taught. Is that correct? Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. You could. I'm weird. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you could. <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, the thing that you remember, your memory, mm -hmm. it's going to have three tags to it. Okay, cool. One is going to be highly emotive. So love, lust, hate, fear. Yes. Yep. Okay. The next is going to be, it could not be repeated the exact same way twice. Nope. Yep. 
perfect. And then the third one is that you shared it with another human being, either by virtue of like you did it with them yep. or you talked like in human element, not on Facey or Insta or something. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So ta-da, I win the, like, I should take that on the road. That's what I should make my money. <laughs> Um, no, but so here's how I know, how, how I know this, uh, to be true is that the, our mind is our, our kind of soft tissue is wired up a very specific kind of way. Hmm. And so when we're masters, when we're ambitious, when we're driven people, we, uh, categorize information in a very specific way. And over time we get really good at the thing that we do. You're a great interviewer. I'm great at math and building things. Whatever you're great at. You're great at marketing. Everyone who's listening is great at a thing. Great for you. When you get better and better at that, your mastery becomes mundane. Mm. You get really bored. You're actually bored out. A lot of people think it's burnt out, you're bored out. And so the reason that that matters is most of us define ourselves by that thing. So the thing that you think, thought of, the thing you could teach, the thing I can teach, um, you know, I'm an engineer or I'm a this or I'm a marketer, I'm an interviewer. If you could teach it, no offense to, you know, all the smart monkeys, but it's not really that special. There's a hundred million other people who could do that same thing. What's special is you as an individual human being. That's the only thing that differentiates you, me from every other MBA in the world is that I'm Kelsey Ramsden. And so we put all this value in that first thing and very little value in the second thing, which is the sum of our memories. So here's what's really interesting is that the way that we categorize information where how our minds work, the reason that I could tell what you were going to think first is because highly emotive things that won't be repeated the same way twice make our minds show up. It goes, wait a minute. Show up for this. Hmm. This isn't like driving home from work where you take the left turn and you're like, I don't even remember doing that. This is life. It's happening right now. Like, hey. So the reason that matters is we spend so much of our time as adults in mastery who are decent at a thing actually living in default. Hmm. We're not making choices anymore. We order the same coffee. We go the same way to work. We see the same friends. We go to the same restaurant. Same, same, same. So why do you think your mind is in neutral? Sad, but it's true. Okay. And so the way to engineer these aha moments, the way to kind of break through that mundane, whether it's life, business, like I call it the missionary sex of your career. <laughs> it's decent. It counts, but it's hardly memorable. It counts. <laughs> Right, but you're not going to say on June the fifth in you know 2017. I had the yeah, fine. Again, good, but not not memorable. And that's what we're actually after: is ambitious people who want to be successful. We're after the the aha moments, those things where we take these individual who we are abilities to solve problems, be ingenious, etc. But what we do is we live our life in neutral when we get to a reasonable place and we kind of go along humming fine and wonder why our business isn't growing, our relationships are not that satisfying. And really, like we like to place the blame everywhere else, but it's actually us. We're not changing anything. So the big aha is, so I call this the 3E model and the fourth E is epiphany. So it's based on emotion, experience that could not be repeated the same way twice. The third thing is embed it through storytelling. You have to do that piece. If you do those three things strategically every day in a small way or a big way, you will demand the fourth thing, which is the fourth E, the epiphany. It will come to you. I absolutely 110% guarantee it. And the reason I know that it works is because I do this. Uh, a lot of my successful friends do this. And it's a lifestyle. It's actually a way of being. So when you say to me, how do you future-proof yourself? How do you live in the present moment? How do you engineer this success? How do you have more aha moments and be more really alive and show up? It's just that. It's that kind of simple and that hard. Um, and so I would invite anyone who's listening to your show to give it a go. Like, don't, don't do something crazy like jump out of a plane immediately, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> How about just ordering something different at your local coffee place? Or go better yet, go to a different one. Or better yet, invite a stranger out for dinner, someone you semi-met and it's uncomfortable. Go to an art show opening when you're not into art and ask a stupid question of someone. Like, put yourself in these positions where your mind is forced to show up. That's, you know? Definitely. That's where I was going to ask because because the entrepreneurs that are listening also might go on the jumping off the bridge, the uh, uncalculated crazy risk go thing. So where I was going to ask, where is that line? Because it's a wonderful thing to be able to push yourself outside your comfort zone so that way you are feeling the moment. But uh-huh. we could also just jump on every bandwagon. You know what I mean? Like in business back in the day, I'd be like, Ooh. oh, squirrel, 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 right? But now I'm interested, but then their business doesn't actually grow because they're going crazy. Where's that line? So the line is, if it's, if it's, um, and I can be totally unsusceptible to the squirrel. So I read you, um, if it is something that makes you feel uncomfortable, it's better. So if it feels like excitement, that's kind of, uh, look, it's like love and lust. Okay. (laughs) So lust is convenient. It's fun. It's um, all these amazing things. But when something hard comes up, poof, it's done. Love is enduring and challenging and forces growth. And right when something gets hard, you want to do it more because it's worth it. The same thing applies. So the small things, the the ways to start this out so that you don't jump out of a plane or get on the next bandwagon, those are those are not super meaningful, but they work the muscle, right? It's you start into it. And the more you do it, the more you realize that if you go and do the thing that you're prone to enjoy already, is it really stretching you? Or is it just another tick on a belt? If you're going to go and do the things that make you feel genuinely uncomfortable and actually stretch your capacity to feel an emotion that's different than the one you always strive to get, talk to people that are different than people that you always surround yourself with. Those are the things where you're actually going to get more new input, more new feed, right? If you just think about it like ingredients on a shelf, and you look at the experience that you think you want to engage in, ask yourself the question, am I really stocking the same ingredient just in a bit of a different way? Hmm. Like if I already dive with sharks, is jumping out of an airplane any different? It is, but is it? Or would it be much more challenging to take um, a drawing class where I'm going to sketch something uncomfortable, nudes, Like that's going to really push me actually really outside my comfort zone because I'm not an artist and that makes me uncomfortable and I don't surround myself with these people. Right. Yeah, totally. That question, what is it I'm actually stalking on the mental shelf here? Well, in regards to that though, how do we take that into business, especially like it it makes a lot Mm -hmm. of logical sense on the personal side, but especially when we're as an entrepreneur wearing so many hats in business. So some of the stuff we have to do and probably better that it's in neutral because it's a pain in the butt or you don't like it or something like that. Or, but how do you, how do we push outside of our comfort zone in, in the different hats that we're wearing, right? Like how far do we push in each one? It's because then it can turn chaotic and that's not necessarily good either. Yeah. So, th- so this is kind of, I think the, the grand balancing act of it is I would, I would often say, start with your personal life first mm-hmm. that will show up in your business life. I think this idea of separating the two things is, is really, um, to me quite archaic in that people think that I'm going to show up at work different. No, how you show up in life is how you show up everywhere. I'm sorry, but it's just a fact. Thank you so for saying you that. Back- thank you, thank you, thank you. Because, I mean, you you coach people and you realize that everything that happens in their personal life affects their business. Everything in their business affects their personal life. And people just are sort of like, oh, no, it's balanced and we can totally be fine. It's like, well, no. No, no. no they're lying. They're, uh, you know, or they're, or, you know what, maybe they're not lying. They have hard belief and they really want to believe it's possible. Um, look. I I don't know everything there is to know. I've done okay. I'm just a regular person like a lot of other people. But just because of my position in the world and the work that I've done, uh, my friends are a lot of the people who people read about and people want to be like or whatever the case may be or want businesses like theirs. 
And the truth is, at three in the morning when we're sitting around the campfire drinking wine, um, people's marriages are falling apart. People's minivans are dirty. People's Teslas are dirty. You know, <laughs> not everybody is in private jets. Not everybody, you know, everyone has the same baseline experience. And um, like I said at the beginning of the show, success will only amplify the things that are your weaknesses. And so whether that's in business, like you don't pay attention to your numbers, go make a bunch of money. Guess how fast you're going to lose it. Right? Yep. <laughs> don't pay attention to your staff. Yep. Hire 300 people and see what your churn rate is and see what your culture looks like. You know, so this idea of future proofing can show up that way as well. So if I know that I haven't really paid attention to how I engage with my staff or people that I work for and with consultants or in-house, um, maybe consider having a conversation with a person that's different than the way you always did. Instead of having a traditional meeting, how about a walk and talk? Instead of just talking about business, how about invite them and sit for coffee? Instead, like, this is not rocket science, but this is actually, it, it, it is in a way because we like to default to what we knew worked. But when you grow, it doesn't keep working. So what worked in grade seven does not work in grade 11, does not work in uni, does not work, right? So the same with our business and our own personal growth. What worked for me when I was 25 and starting out and I was $130,000 in debt when I started my business does not work for me at 42 when the numbers are, you know, a little bit different. And so I think for any listener, when you're asking the question specifically, how do we apply this to our business? It's just the same. Look at the ways that you're weak or the things that you ignore, the things you don't like or whatever it is. Um, and I'm not saying you have to be an expert in everything. That's why I have accountants. Um, but understand where you have an opportunity to engage in something just a little bit differently. Ask a different question. Set up a meeting differently. Um, and I think you'll start to to not only highlight where you have growth opportunities, but you'll start to listen differently. You know, you'll start to see the whole organization um, differently. And, and let's be honest. So let's let's take an example of something everyone knows, um, like an iPhone or whatever smartphone. Steve Jobs did not invent the smartphone. Steve Jobs took a bunch of stuff that was already lying around and smashed it together. There was already a phone, there was already satellites, there was computers, there was this, there was that. He went outside of the norm and looked at a problem in a different way. So every, if you, and I spent a number of years researching this, so uh, if you look at every modern material advancement, whether it's how Albert Einstein came up with the theory of relativity, Steve Jobs did the iPhone, um, the guy who founded Red Bull, like, all of those people went and experienced something in their life that gave them time and space to look back at their business and that thing that they've mastered and apply their unique experience and subset to it. And it only happened when they stepped outside of their norm, right? It's like, how are you going to solve the same solutions with the same problems, the same, same, same. And I think people want, and again, this is not like, politically correct thing to say and people will not like me for this but I think everyone wants the equation they want to be told this is the way to do it here's the five-step process here's the whatever um and there's lots of that that'll get you you know pretty far but if you want to be exceptional you have to be an exception to the rule and if everyone's following the rule, then you'll get what everyone gets, which is decent, potentially mediocre outcomes. If you really want to be successful, that's a different thing entirely and a very unique thing. And I would say to anyone who's listening, who's trying to be successful, uh, start with getting real 
clear on what you define success as. And don't just make it about money because you'll get the money. Look, if you work hard enough, you'll get there. It's like it's absolutely going to happen for you. Um, but you have to know what that actually looks like for you, what it feels like um, and what you want to do with that. And, uh, and and one of the ways to to eliminate or abbreviate that success hangover, because everyone has it. Um, if you, if you arrive at the place you thought you wanted, look, if you finished an undergrad, if right now you're listening to the show, you're driving your car, you're folding laundry, whatever you're doing, you finished an undergrad. Uh, I will, I will bet a hundred dollars that you walked across the stage, you got your piece of paper and you were like, Oh, okay. So <laughs> now what? Yeah. You know, that's well, a debt to pay I, off. Woohoo. Okay. Now what? Yeah. <laughs> You know, or you got the promotion at work, yeah. same thing. You went home, you had a glass of wine, you were stoked, and the next year you're like, okay, so now I have that job. So the idea, what I'm, what I'm arriving at is, or driving at is, this idea of like, it isn't until you understand really clearly who you are, uh, what success is for you, the, and, and how you're going to eliminate or abbreviate that success hangover that you're going to get out of this cycle of stepping up and finding a plateau, stepping up, finding a plateau. And those plateaus get longer and longer. Um, the, the more you follow the five step process. Right. It's funny. And I have so many friends that have been on this show that do the same thing where they're like, now what, now what, now what, but what you're saying, and I love is that even the neural pathways in your brain, the more unknown we go, the more creative we can be, the more genius, we, the more fun we have in the actual moment. So that way you can actually enjoy the steps or the, it might be a slide up that you're crawling up. You know what I mean? It might not be fun the entire way, but the fact that we can ride that unknown wave uh, makes a huge difference, right? And I think it's important too, like back to, the, to how you were talking about applying it to our life and our business in a really kind of strategic way, as opposed to random and just seeking good time. <laughs> um, and uh, this is going to sound like a plug for my book, which it is not. It is a plug for people to do the work um, because you can get this. Uh, I'm going to tell you about an exercise you can get on my website just for free. You don't have to buy the book because uh, I think it's that important. And in all honesty, selling books is never going to make me as much money as I do building highways. So to me, the work in the book is just about helping people like me get off the sidelines and do more great work. Um, because it's hell when you have success, arrive at that place and it doesn't solve the problem. And so anyway, the point of it being there's a matrix I built, it's a quadrant, um, and you can get, I think it's exercise number one. In fact, I know that it is, uh, if you go to successhangover.com, you can get that exercise. And the reason that it matters is it's going to highlight very clearly for you which areas of your life you're you're living in neutral. Oh, you're good. living in deep. That's what I wanted so, to know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. this is it. And that's yeah. what everybody wants, right? Yeah. Is to is to go, where am I and where am I? Look, here, if I say to you, imagine your default future, that means nothing changes. Great. No, I like my life, so that's good. But yeah. <laughs> okay, so now you're 45, mm -hmm. default future. Mm -hmm. Nothing has changed. Mm. I and do this to other people. Back. I don't like it when you're doing it to me. This sucks. <laughs> you know? But so and it's cool. But yeah. this is the point about being present and loving our life right now yep. is such a gift, but not being strategic about how are we acting today so that my 45 and 65 and 85 year old self is like, thank you. This is right. better. Yeah. So, so this quadrant will help you really clearly go, right. Right here, I'm doing all the same stuff I've always done. This is totally disruption zone. I'm reading The Economist. I'm watching, t you know, I'm, re I'm consuming all the same stuff. I'm talking to all the same people, which I love these people. But, but geez, if I just keep doing that, you know, or over here. And so, so I would encourage anybody who's like even curious, it's uncomfortable. You know, because like no, none of us like looking at like dirty laundry of our life, but um, 
but it's so fruitful in that you can just highlight something really quick and go, yeah, small thing, no big deal. Instead of consuming all the same media, guess what? I'm going to try something new. I'm going to read a different mag on my next flight. Instead of The Economist, I'm going to buy Rolling Stone. And I'm just going to expose myself to a different subset of people who are thinking different things and experiencing different things. And maybe I'm into it, maybe I'm not. But maybe there'll be something small in there that I go, oh, that's a bit of the cultural norm that I've been missing. Do you know what? That product I'm offering, now I see. It's it's aimed at this subset and those people are getting information this way that I wasn't aware of and this part of their culture, right? So it, it can give you a little window into something you never knew that you needed to know. Yeah, That's usually when the biggest ahas happen, right? Definitely. Well, and it's funny because I'm thinking a lot of the people that are listening are probably like, yeah, but that's wasting time because I have all these goals and I, what if I pick the wrong thing and all this stuff, right? But mm-hmm. but the way that you're approaching it is that it's all just little testing. It doesn't have to be some crazy nutso going this direction. It's very small incremental things that will just shift the way that you're, you think. Totally. And here's, guess what? Look, if you're good, you're good. You don't need to read The Economist again. You don't need to read another magazine about leadership. You don't need to do enough. Like we want to, everybody wants to get the incremental one eighteenth of a percent better. Uh, I'm great at connecting with people. I love it. I'm really good at it. I could go to workshops on that all day long. But the truth of the matter is I'm in the probably the top 10% of people on earth at connecting with people. How much better do I have to be at that? Wouldn't it be more interesting and more valuable for me to connect with people in a way that I can speak about something totally different? Where I meet some random guy who sits beside me on a plane and he says, uh, blah, 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 about some boring thing like woodworking. And I'm actually capable of talking to him about that because I've expanded my interest set. And the one time I read something about some boring woodworking thing. It, do you know what I'm getting at though? Totally. Yeah. It's you know when you go to a dinner party and someone comes in and they're like, Oh, uh, I just went I and you're like, What'd you do last weekend? And they say, Oh, you know what? I did a puppeteering workshop. And you're like, What the hell? What? Pup- <laughs> that's weird. That person's fascinating now. <laughs> that person is more fascinating than every other person who read a book about leadership. Yeah. What's so funny is I've taken a puppeteering, I've drawn nudes, all the things that you say, I'm we, I'm the wacko, and the, I have a sword, I love I'm it. the wacko. But you're right, it helps with the connecting of people and just the, the neural pathway side. Um, because what, one of the things that I found a long time ago with me is that I kept – I kept moving because I wanted change so bad. So I kept moving to different states because I liked the energy of moving. And then I got into business and I started doing all these things, random things in business because that gave me the the difference. And now I have to do all these weirdo puppeteer. It was actually really fun. Uh, (laughs) But all these weirdo things in order to keep my brain so it doesn't feel like it's stagnant because I do. I feel... uh, if it's not moving, doing something crazy or nutso, it's not, it's not good. And then I get into more of a depression, not depression, but I get in a sad state in business because I don't have the energy wherever else I go. So I'm a testament oh, to everything that you're saying. <laughs> it's, but, you've, but this is exactly it. And here's the, here's the magic of it. And this is maybe also going to offend some people. Um, not everyone is like us. Mm-hmm. There are people who don't need as much feed for their minds. Some people's minds are high horsepower. They just are. They operate faster. They need more input. They're driven. Their brains are just like, feed me. We were born with brains that are ferocious consumers. Some people's brains are happy to have mashed potatoes and pork chops every day. Our brains aren't like that. But we treat them like that. Mm. We think that we're going to feed them enough of a few different things, variety. Yeah, here's a bit of this and that. Okay, now you're fine. No. No, our brains won't do that. And so it's no wonder, to your point, that we get to these places and we get so bored and dried up. And then we wonder why our business is stalling and we feel stuck and we're depressed or we just don't have it. I don't feel alive. I'm bored. I just, I'm not in the flow. I can't feel it. I'm in a funk. I'm stuck. Like all that. 
definitely more often than not it's because we followed what society said we should do which is check a bunch of boxes and then stay still because we got all the stuff we said we wanted we're like going on the easter egg hunt we got all the eggs and they're like now your basket is full no we want to dump the basket because there's more right. what the fun is in the pursuit. Yeah. The discomfort of pursuit is our jam. And everyone's out there talking about arriving and the all, you know, like I said before, this like crushing the last 1%. And I believe that for people like us, that is the worst advice that a person could give. The best advice a person could give is guess what? you're always going to want to ferociously feed on new and interesting things. And that's what makes you exceptional. Please just do that. You will make more money. You will have a richer life. You will have better relationships. People will want to be around you a thousand times more, which just generates more opportunity. It's, it's just, you know, it's like a circular thing. It just, it does everything you want it to do, but because people think it's not normal, or we should just simmer down and be thankful because we got all the things. Um, that is a direct pathway to like the worst hangover I can ever imagine. I love that your website is successhangover.com also, by the way. I had no idea that that was a piece of it because the reminder of discomfort of pursuit. And I know everybody says enjoy the journey, but I love the way that you talk about that because it's enjoying the journey is one thing, but being okay or reveling in the discomfort of pursuit is totally different. And that's what I think that we don't focus on enough. Like we actually like this. I had to explain to my friend, no, I... I like being in this mode, even though it looks crappy on your side. I like not knowing <laughs> what I'm doing or being really uncomfortable, unfortunately or fortunately, I guess is the, is the point, right? Well, totally. And, and I think that that's kind of the, the piece about it is, um, there's this, uh, unfortunately being an entrepreneur, uh, became really sexy. So a lot of people who aren't meant to be here at our party showed up. Cause it was like, the, you know, it was the biggest ticket in town. And, um, you know, again, people might not like this, but if, if you don't actually perspire and salivate and like get all kind of frothy about the win, when you've been challenged and you succeed and you, and you, and you do that and you're like, Oh my God, but immediately you're not like, okay, done. Okay, we're safe. If immediately you're like, now we're here, what's around? Hmm. That's an entrepreneur. If you're like, now we're safe. That's not. Uh, and, it, and it's not about risk and, you know, being a crazy risky person. It's about curiosity. You know, um, it's just different for people like us. And it's not better, you know, God help us. I know there are a lot of us who are like, I wish I could just get a job. Wouldn't that be rad? <laughs> yes. I just like a job. <laughs> Man, if I could actually be happy for more than one day at that, that'd be so cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, this is why I love this conversation. I know we could have a million more about connecting with people. And I'd love to hear about like the relationship side of entrepreneurship too, because I get asked that question all the time too. And I know we don't have enough time, so I'll have to have you back on the show. So I'm going to ask the last question that I always ask. And, um, and of course, everybody should buy your book. I'll be the one to push it. Okay. So besides that, <laughs> it's a book. Everybody should get a book. It's a book that's going to help you with the exercise that I was like, I need that. So go get the book. <laughs> but well, what's there's nine others in there as well. And I will say, um, it's a, it's a, it's been out for 30 days. Uh, and it's a bestseller in Canada across six categories, the States, Australia, and we're nearly there in, in the UK, which is berserker because uh, that was the, uh, my plan. I was like, I just want to, I want this book. I know I heard people say this before and I was like, that's BS. You're lying. Um, but I just, I want it to get in the hands of the people who need it because I, I understand it. And that is why it exists in the world. And so to actually have people buy the book and send the emails and like, it's just like I'm reading my story a thousand times a day now when people are like, oh my God, 
I, did, I, you know, I thought I never told anyone I felt that way because I thought it was crazy. Your I crazy thought people would think I was crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so honestly, like to anybody who is listening to the show, like not even pumping the book, um, like I said, totally free exercises. And, and um, if, if you, if you try out the book, I think you'll like it. There is some swearing in it and there, there's a bit of new drawing. Uh, <laughs> So you have done that. Little, Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bit of there's a bit of randomness, but um, but yeah, I think if nothing else, you know, not to pump the book, it's just it's it's good work for the people who need it. Yeah. So on that note, besides go get the book, and what's one action besides getting the book that everybody <laughs> that listeners should take this week to help them move them forward towards their goal of a million? Oh yeah, this is super easy. Um. I'm going to cheat and give them to uh, the first one, because I know a lot of people don't address it is know your numbers, please. Like actually do. Yeah. Uh, if they're bad, they're bad. It's like I had cancer. If you have cancer, you have it, whether or not the doctor tells you if your business isn't doing what it's supposed to, it's just not doing it. So the first thing is I'd say like, if you want to make a million bucks, get, get jiggy with your numbers, like get naughty with those things, understand them, and, and, and love them. And, you know, a lot of people talk about top line. It's, it's a myth. Don't believe those people. Please, please look at your bottom line. I really, I know a lot of people who make multiple millions of dollars and keep zero dollars. It gets crazy. So please numbers. And then the second thing uh, I would say is break a rule we all operate in some set of rules we've set for ourselves, the way we are, who we believe we are, what we believe we do. Um, you know, don't break the law, but break a rule. I would say if you can break one of your rules today, it could be a simple one as the way that you go, what you order, how you answer the phone. I really do not care, but challenge the paradigms that you believe you've set for yourself because I'll bet that there are at minimum 15 decisions you're not making in a day uh, where you actually have choice and you've just defaulted into something because it got set and it used to work. Yep. The seven dinners that we always make every single time. And that's the thing. Yep. The way we go. You know, the person that you call, yep. the email that you send, the way you sign off your email. Like, Oh, that's a good just, point, man. <laughs> you know, try something different and, um, and, and just test a rule that you believe that you have to operate within. Awesome. Make sure if everyone's driving or anything like that, write that down. Not, not while you're driving. That's the rule we don't want to break. <laughs> Eyes on the road, people. But thank you so much. Tell us where we can get the book and where we can find out more about you online. Yeah. So like all good books, you can find it on Amazon um in every given country around the world apparently and uh you can find me at kelsey ramsden r-a-m-s-d-e-n or successhangover.com thank you so much this interview did not go where i thought it was going to go at all and i love it so thank you <laughs> very you, you made my experience different also which i really really appreciate i hope you have an awesome amazing fantastic day i will you too thanks for having me Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that interview. And if you want to check out more amazing resources, I'm only curating the best of the best. Go check out eventualmillionaire.com. You can take the Eventual Millionaire quiz, figure out where you are in business and what you need right now. Plus, you can look at curated resources specifically for you on the new Start Here page. I'm so excited. Please join us. Please let me know if you need anything at all. I'm here for you. And have a fantastic day. Bye.